The crash in Las Vegas late Sunday afternoon it happened early on in the race and in an instant. And drivers said they they never seen anything like it. Pieces of metal, car and fire, no car attached. And uh, the outpouring of just sheer raw emotion on the track was immediate for Dan Weldon. He was just so beloved on the Indy circuit. His drivers just broke down in mm -hmm. tears. But take a look at these pictures. You get a sense of just how bad the accident was. That is Weldon's car right there flipping right into the air. Does it again. And as you say, the, the cars were so closely right. packed that once they hit, they went flying. He really had no chance. And a lot of people are asking this morning, was the track just simply too fast? And was the field just too large? There were others that were injured as well. And Josh Elliott, I know you've been following this for us very closely. Yeah, good morning to both of you. It is impossible to really know the violence of a car speeding in excess of 220 miles per hour and slamming into a wall. But as we saw yesterday at Las Vegas, most Motor Speedway, the aftermath of such a horror can too easily become the stuff of unspeakable tragedy. Once there it is right there. And Just 12 laps into the final race of the IndyCar season, racing's razor-thin line between escape and tragedy was breached. Another view from Danica's car as she... The 15-car crash was horrific. Cars turned to pinwheeling fireballs, hurtling into the protective fencing along the track's second turn including the one driven by Dan Weldon, a 33-year-old British former champion. IndyCar is very sad to announce that Dan Weldon has passed away. Weldon had no chance. A chain reaction of carnage erupted in a matter of milliseconds. Weldon's car, flying over 220 miles per hour into the turn, climbed the back of Paul Tracy's car, bursting into flames, flipping end over end, and slamming into a crash fence above the retaining wall. This picture captures the chaos, a debris field no driver could possibly evade. In an instant, the worst fears realized by drivers who'd earlier expressed concern over the track's blinding speeds. This is not a suitable track, and we've seen it today. Dan's car, from what I saw from the video, was, came over my back wheel and over top of me, and um, it's just a horrendous accident. Two drivers were hospitalized. Weldon airlifted to a nearby trauma center. His fellow racers left reeling. It was one of my best friends. He's a friend of all of ours. And he'll be missed. And uh, I just feel for his family. Don't ever say race car drivers don't have emotions. Dario Franchitti reduced to tears as his grief-stricken wife, Ashley Judd, looked on. And then you see that happening to Dan and you just go, you know what? I don't, it doesn't matter. Weldon was beloved on the IndyCar circuit, a gregarious figure who'd gone from racing go-karts at age four to winning the series title in 2005. Even though he'd blogged about his car's lack of speed earlier in the week, Weldon had pushed his way from the back of the crowded 34-card field and into the lead pack, just as he said he'd hoped to last month. If I'm in a good situation, I'll be able to perform. After learning of Weldon's death, the race was canceled. And as bagpipes then sounded, Weldon's fellow drivers honored him as only they could, driving five of the most heartbreaking laps of their lives in memory of his. Now, Weldon hadn't actually qualified for the race, but in gaining late entry as a sort of wild card, he was also chasing a $2.5 million bonus had he won the race as a non-regular driver. And to that end, Robin, he'd been publicly promising yes. all week a most entertaining ride. And a lot of people have been commenting about that, Josh.